We now talk about pulsing characteristics. In particular, let's discuss duty factor. After a pulse is transmitted from the transducer, the ultrasound system immediately switches to the receiving mode. In general, for a typical ultrasound system, the transmit time is generally less than 0.1 to 1% of the total pulse repetition cycle or period. As we'll see on the next set of slides, you have a transducer giving off a pulse that travels a predetermined distance within the body tissue. A second pulse won't be given off until all the echoes have been detected from the initial pulse. This pulse has a pulse duration, PD, which we learned earlier determines the ultimate axial resolution of the ultrasound image. As this pulse propagates deeper into the soft tissue and hits the, the depth of interest, and all the echoes have been retrieved, a second pulse will now be given off. This time period between the transmission of the ultrasound pulse is deemed to be called pulse repetition period, or PRP. Since the pulse duration describes how long the pulse lasts, we can define duty factor as PD, or pulse duration, over PRP, or pulse repetition period. So duty factor DF is PD over PRP. Alternatively, there is a, a term PRF, pulse repetition frequency, which is inversely proportional to PRP. In summary, all pulse echoes must be analyzed or otherwise extinguished from the first pulse before the transmission of a subsequent pulse. Theoretically, at maximum PRF, if the scan depth is increased, you may want to reduce the PRF or increase the PRP so that you don't get multiple echoes. Let's do an example. For a pulse duration PD of 3 microseconds and a pulse repetition period PRP of 2 milliseconds, calculate the duty factor DF. Recall the equation that we showed earlier. Utilize PD or pulse duration of 3 microseconds which can be rewritten as 0 0.003 milliseconds. Duty factor therefore is PD or 0 0.003 milliseconds divided by PRP or 2 milliseconds. This simple ratio will give you a DF of 0 0.0015 which can also be written as a percentage by multiplying by 100 and you get 0.15 percent as the duty factor which is within the range that we mentioned earlier. Now let's do a question to test your knowledge. What increases the duty factor? There are four choices. Which one is correct? Is it A, by increasing the pulse repetition period? Or is it B, by decreasing the ultrasound pulse amplitude? Or C, by increasing the pulse duration? Or can you increase the duty factor by D, decreasing the pulse repetition frequency? You may pause the video to work out your response and continue the video to find out the correct answer. The correct response is C, increasing pulse duration. Notice that the definition of duty factor DF is PD over PRP. So by increasing PD, duty factor will be increased. Increasing ultrasound pulse amplitude does not do much by way of affecting duty factor and PRP, PRF are not in the right direction. Now let's move on to ultrasound scanner requirements. We know that includes transducer, you need a transmitter which feeds into the ultra high voltage pulser and a beam former, you need a receiver we name it R, which jo whose job is to amplify, demodulate, compensate, compress, and also beamform. Now beamformer, as you could tell, is critical to both transmit and receive. And then you have the digital signal processing aspect of the ultrasound system, which processes beam mode and Doppler measurements. Finally, storage and display, 
memory and a scan conversion leading to display of the image. The next slide might be a doozy. It's a block diagram of a typical ultrasound scanner of today. Look at the different functional blocks that make up this ultrasound scanner. It seems a little intimidating at first, so therefore let's simplify things and look at it in terms of big blocks. So on the left hand side you have the transducer which we talked about in a previous lecture. Signals coming in and out through the front-end processing block which feeds into the back-end core processing block and then display and storage. An ultrasound system basically contains these three big blocks. Front-end processing, which as we mentioned earlier is responsible for amplification, compensation, demodulation, and also transmission. Back-end processing crunches the numbers. And finally the compression and scan conversion are utilized for the image storage and display. Now let's talk about front-end processing. The front-end processing includes both transmission of the ultrasound pulse as well as the receiving of the echoes from the reflectors. Now in terms of the receiver, the receiver's job is to decode and process the returning ultrasound echo signals. There is an analog or digital beamformer that shapes the outgoing or the incoming signals. Now let's peel off the, the block bit by bit. We took off the block covering the transducer. You have an eight element transducer for this example. You peel off the front end processing block and you are left with the upper line of that front end is the transmission part of the front end and the second line is the receiving aspect. In terms of front end transmission, a high voltage pulsar is part of the circuitry that provides the electrical driving force to drive the transducer to produce ultrasound pulse. Increasing the transmission voltage leads to higher amplitude sound waves, leading to increased decibels. By amplifying the signal level, you get uniform increase in reflector brightness. However, the downside is that by increasing transmission power, it increases the patient exposure to the sound waves. And finally, the depth penetration is unchanged with transmission flat power. Now let's do a question. An ultrasound operator increases the transmission output power of an ultrasound system. Which of the following effects will not occur by his or her doing this? There are four choices. Is it A. Reflectors become brighter on the ultrasound display. Is it B. Weaker reflectors that are not seen at lower transmission power now become visible. Or is it C. The patient's acoustic exposure is increased. And finally, is it D? You have increased depth penetration. Which of these does not hold true by increasing the transmission of output power? The correct answer is D. Increased depth penetration. Even though you increase the transmission power, you actually do not improve depth penetration. Now let's talk about this issue in a little more detail. When you increase the transmission power, you increase the overall signal gain, albeit with increased patient exposure to acoustic waves. However, increased transmission power does not increase depth penetration. How come? Because signal intensity degrades exponentially according to the equation I equals I0 times the exponential of minus alpha times x. So therefore, you have more power, the same fraction degrades. So attenuation is mainly dependent on echo depth and ultrasound frequency. Attenuation determines penetration, therefore transmission power does not play a role. Now in terms of the how the chain events happen within transmission, let's start with the beam former control, which is the brains behind the beam shaping of the transmission pulse. So during transmit mode, it delivers a set of digitizing sequences to the transmit beamformer portion of the circuit, which in turn will give off a sequence of pulses that in conjunction with the DAC, which is the digital to analog converter, will drive the high voltage pulsar. The high voltage pulsar, therefore, will yield a output signal that will drive the transducer itself due to the piezoelectric effect. This electrical signal will be converted into an acoustic signal.